Organicaseed.com today. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. You know, with a possible outbreak this fall, you know that just the military. I mean, it, 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 they have some serious concerns about what's going to happen in the fall with this flu. Because yep. we'll have two flus at once, obviously. Regular old every year flu and then this, you know, pig flu. It's an H1N1. Yeah, in case the, <laughs> case the government asks FEMA for help, the government will be will be ready there with the with the military. We're told it's as health officials race to get vaccines ready. The U.S. government has just gotten 20 million doses, and we're told it could be getting uh, ready to start giving those shots by October. Even though the trials for these drugs hasn't even begun yet, just minutes from now, a panel from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta is expected to hold a news conference in Atlanta and give its recommendation on how the new vaccine should be handed out. We'll keep you an eye on that news conference, and we'll let you know exactly what happens and all the developments from it. Our Brian Wilson is covering this. Brian, the military getting involved. That seems kind of, you know, drastic. Well, I think it is dramatic, Chef. Fox News has confirmed that NORTHCOM has a proposal sitting on the desk of Secretary of Defense Robert Gates that would authorize the military to back up FEMA should there be an H1N1 pandemic. The proposal comes from NORTHCOM commander Victor Renoir, who wants uh, permission to set up five regional military teams who will respond if FEMA says it, it needs help. One assumes this might be necessary, Chef, if there were, for example, mass quarantines. Mass quarantines. Mass quarantines. Uh, well, there's, there's a hearing today in the Senate on preparing for H1N1. Where are they with this thing? Well, the H1N1 vaccine is not completely ready. They do have some test doses they want to start testing. Won't be ready for a while, but they do begin to spend a campaign in the fall. And, Shep, those who should be at the front of the line, adults 19 to 24, we're beginning to hear, because it seems that the H1N1 hits young people the hardest. Yeah, I guess they saw that here in the United States, but in, in, were they seeing that in outbreaks in other parts of the world as well? I mean, we've learned a lot about this thing recently. Well, the problem is it keeps changing, and, and that is the real issue here, is that this one morphs and mutates and comes back in different ways, so they have to be very careful, but they think right now the, the people at greatest risk our young people, 19 to 24. All right, Brian Wilson on Capitol Hill. And, of course, reminder, we are tracking H1N1. Can we play that animation again? There we go. Be very afraid. Be very afraid. Be very afraid. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. That's a little YouTube video somebody put together. You know, we should edit a video together just of all the CNN, Fox, ABC saying there's going to be forced inoculations. The Army is going to make you take the injections. But it's all for your own good. And NORTHCOM, that was set up to fight Al-Qaeda, we promise it's not to fight the American people. We promise we're only going to use the Army against Al-Qaeda. And then, oh, NORTHCOM. You know, you have SOUTHCOM and you have CENTCOM. And, well, now you have... Northcom and Africon and all the rest of it over the United States out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. And they've announced they're going to put troops in the streets of America and they train with the police in these drills and the DHS reports saying gun owners, conservatives and veterans are the main force that they are prepared for. And the John Warner Defense Authorization Act states Northcom's main mission is suppressing governors and rogue states. You see, the federal government was seized by offshore private banks. According to Bloomberg and the Associated Press and others, congressional hearings in the last week, $23.7 trillion. And that number's a month old. It always comes out a few months late. So in nine months from the bailout point, they had stolen $23.7 trillion. It's now probably more than $25 trillion. That is double the GDP of the country, roughly. And uh, $9.4, $9.5 trillion would have paid off all mortgages in the United States. All mortgages, not bad mortgages, not mortgages subprime, not jumbo mortgages. Every condo, every mansion, every small bungalow, every cottage, every mortgage in America paid off for over $9 trillion. It's already 23.7, and that's not counting another month plus. So, and they won't say where the money is. 
and they brag. And they, the, how do you think the IMF and World Bank, when they take over a third world country, run things? They go in and pay off the politicians, and the politicians set up a military system, and they suppress the people, and they come in and raise taxes and regulations and seize the roads, the ports, the infrastructure, and hand it over to foreign countries, and they turn the major regular highways, freeways, into toll roads, and they triple the water price, and they set up all these systems. And now they're going to have a global government, according to Time, Newsweek, everybody else, but they say it's good, that will tax everybody. And if you don't like it, Northcom is standing by. And then they can also run around and fearmonger using the swine flu. And that is clearly just another drill, another exercise. We don't know how extreme it's going to be in federalization and the United States not just being federalized, but under World Health Organization, mainstream UN announcements that they are directing the United States and the rest of the world. This is a this is a perfect pretext for the state worldwide, controlled by big offshore banks, to crack down and control and enslave their population. That's what's happening, period. And they use the Patriot Act thousands of times per year per state and non-terror related. They're getting rid of the whole Bill of Rights, whole Constitution. They have warrantless wiretapping in non-terror related cases now. The Cybersecurity Command of the NSA and the Air Force admit they're spying on the web, engaging in propaganda on the web, engaging in manipulation. They are doing all of this right now everywhere. And it's just unspeakable. How is Obama going to get his carbon tax through in the fall? How is he going to get his socialized health care through in the fall? How is he going to get, quote, amnesty, uh, immigration reform through in the fall? How is he going to get his anti-gun bills that are all introduced through? How is he going to get his Clean Water Restoration Act that federalizes all above and below water in the country. The entire nation has water underground. Total federalization. No judge, no jury, they just take over. How are they going to successfully do that? How are they going to be able to do that? How is this going to be done? Well, I'll tell you how this is going to be done. This is going to be done through fear-mongering, through, through brinksmanship and maybe even war with Iran and Pakistan this, as a distraction and a diversion. Maybe NATO will run another sneak attack on a Russian-controlled territory on its border, like South Ossetia and Georgia on 888 last year. Coming up on the anniversary of that in about uh, eight days. Wow. Time flies. And the, the swine flu. Clearly. I mean, we know it's killed less than 200 people in the United States, and that's even puffed up numbers. We know it's killed less than 2,000 worldwide. We know the regular flu kills half a million every year, 37,000 in the United States. Why are they fear-mongering? Why are they freaking out so bad? Why are they going crazy? Why is this happening? Why are they already pushing and getting the public ready for forced inoculation? Why are they announcing troops are going to be on the streets? Because, ladies and gentlemen, unemployment is above 21% now. And that's even with their cook numbers. Things are rapidly deteriorating fastly by design. They're imploding the economy to consolidate it, just like they did third world countries over and over again. This is very, very serious. And this is happening now. And so I'm begging all of you, the listeners, to get informed and to get involved in your communities and to warn everybody around you. Remember that before the staged flu outbreak and fear-mongering in Mexico in April, I went on air in March 5th and on other transmissions and said specifically, I believe they were going to stage a flu pandemic or fear-mongering to do with flu. The anthrax attacks run by the feds showed us that it only needs to kill a few people. It's the fear of it, the stampeding. You know, how did ancient aboriginals, how did ancient uh, human tribes kill woolly mammoths for food? 
That was obviously the prey of choice because, uh, you know, it, it had hundreds of times the meat that a deer would per kill. Humans didn't usually go up against a woolly mammoth or a mastodon uh, just with spears and swords and, and, and rocks, spears and clubs and uh, rocks. They didn't have swords, obviously. They would go up against them by having beaters in the woods or in a field, spread out, beating drums, and they would drive the mammoths. You might have a person spread out every 500 yards at first, beating their drums, beating their drums, spread out over a couple miles, driving first in a straight line, then closing in. This is how sharks and dolphins hunt fish. Thrasher sharks go in circles around fish, get them all into one mass and eat them. And they 